And we're live. Hello, everybody. Hi. Thank you for everyone who has joined us this afternoon. You can probably see that this is not a Tom next to me today. Unless my Tom really changed. Up. Yeah, it's rocking up <laughs> a little bit. Uh, we've got Carol with us today. Carol's our head of customer Hi, care. Guys. So I don't know, some of you probably do know Carol, somebody might not know Carol. But of course, we've also got Abby with us today. So hello, Abby. Hey. Thank Hi. you. Us. Thank you for having me. Bye. So excited to have you on. Yeah, I am really. And I've seen the comments already. Everyone's like, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> so lots of excitement today. So shout out to everyone who's joined us. We've got 52 people live with us at the moment. We'll give it a couple of minutes to let you guys join. I know obviously the time zone differences and stuff like that. So um, lots of people saying hello. Hi, Deborah. She said hello, Abby, SJ and Carol. Paul. Oh, hi, everyone from Sydney. Hi, Paul. Yeah, loads of different locations here. It's really hot and sunny in the UK today, so we are loving it, don't we? Yes. Well, maybe not so much right now because we've passed through a year, kind of after the call. That's so true. Start to look a Melting little bit. slightly. Yeah, if you start to yeah. get at the end of the call, you know what. That's why. <laughs> but Abby, you were saying the weather in Berlin is even Yeah. Hot. Um, the weather here is actually hotter than when I'm in the Philippines, so that's kind of weird. Yeah, because we don't really have a lot of AC here, so I'm yeah. trying to get that. But today it's better. It's like 29. So it was bearable. It was a good day. <laughs> Yesterday was just like too bad. Like I was sweating the whole day. Like 35, yeah. 36 degrees. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. We haven't had it that hot, have we? <laughs> no. Lucky. No. I think, but I think we're due it Saturday. It's meant to get really warm in the weekend. Mm -hmm. But again, well, no air con. It's. <laughs> it's gonna be hot. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be hot. We have to air con. Yeah, but then I get uh, home and I'm like, I can't breathe. Well, it's hot because you have air con in the office and then the you car. have air con in the car and then mm -hmm. you get home to the house and you're just like, no air. And no air. I really <laughs> hate bugs. Like, I hate bugs. So I am like reluctant to have the windows open. And my husband, yeah. like, he'll come in and open all the windows. And oh, I'm no. Like, There's too many bugs. I hate it. <laughs> yeah, it's summertime where all the bugs come in. So it's, yeah. I've been getting a lot of mosquito bites. It's not nice. Yeah, I have two on my leg. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> We're having mm -hmm. a weird influx of spiders in the office today. Like, honestly, they're yeah. everywhere. We it's... think we think a spider might have had some babies in the office. Oh. And we keep finding, well, we, we found the, the big daddy or mummy mama there is it's <laughs> but then we keep finding all these little ones so i'm not too sure what's going on there. today is just a day for spiders it's bizarre, <laughs> yeah. really bizarre. unpopular in the office <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not, i don't really mind them they're fine but um a couple of yeah, people I'm, aren't as keen i'm as not okay as <laughs> he's like nope nope i don't want to <laughs> So we've got about 56, oh, 50, I'd say 55, now it's gone up to 56 yeah. people online. So again, shout out to everyone who's joined us, a big hello to you. So for anyone who doesn't know you, which I'm sure is a very small percentage, but would you please introduce yourself, Abby, and just let us know a little bit more about you? Sure. So hi, guys. I'm Abby. I'm actually from the Philippines, but I'm currently in Berlin for two months to, um, I'm having this artist residency program that I'm part of, and yeah, basically, I do, I am an artist and author, so I have written books on lettering and journaling, and I am primarily an artist. I do hand lettering as my main medium, and I also do content. I have a YouTube channel. I'm also a Design Cuts partner, so <laughs> I am also um, now in the process of sort of growing my YouTube channel, building my newsletter, and really sharing art to people not just through what i do but really helping others like with small tutorials or mini tips that could help everyone like get into their creative side so i think that's like my mission as an artist is to really help others as well as inspire others to find their own creativity and know more about how to be creative if they want to be an artist i'm really one of those people who are like, yeah, go for it. And <laughs> yeah, so basically that's what I do. Mostly art, artists and author stuff. It's a lot. I, I also- I like You're a very busy lady. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's like, I don't know how to describe myself. Like I also uh, run a shop. Uh, my sister is actually running it in the Philippines right now because I'm here, but I make some books. I have books there in stationery. I like to design stuff. I'm really into a lot of um, art stores and stationery shopping, so I guess, that also inspired me to run my shop. So 
It's We've got like, a few stationary hoarders in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking the back best. and thinking they love a bit of stationary down there. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's basically, really yeah. Like, yeah. The washing tape. Oh, yes, cooing mm-hmm. over it earlier. Actually. I should give you guys some. I'll probably send over some at your office. I have like, I've made some washi tapes because a lot of people like them as well. I collect a lot of them, so. Honestly, yeah. as Jake said, like we are hoarders in this office. We love the station. <laughs> yeah, so. we do. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. amazing. So let us know in the chat. I have linked Abby's Instagram below, mm-hmm. but let us know. I'm keen to see how many of you are already following Abby and are aware of Abby. So quick yes or no in the chat, which I know there's often a delay, so it can always be a bit awkward yeah. when we ask the question and then nothing happens. <laughs> um, but let us know if you are following Abby already and you obviously are here because you know who she is or if you're just here. Because oh, there are some answers already. There we go, yeah. yeah. They're flowing in, lots of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, are you crazy? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> With exclamation points. <laughs> no, no, there's a lot of them coming in as well. Yeah, you know, Love hearts you, as yeah. well. Abby, how did you get into design in the first place? I got into design, I actually don't know. This this account that I had, Tumblr account, like, in 2010. (laughs) I mean, yeah, that's basically, like, that was how I started, like, all these, like, reblogs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I started to delve into Photoshop when I was in high school, just editing, like, class photos, making them, like, have gradients and, like, weird edits and stuff. But I guess, like, the whole realm of design, maybe like 2012, 2013, because I took up advertising management in school and some part of it, we had to do a lot of design work, which was like design magazine layouts, do posters, do a lot of these like, um, I also worked in an organization for school that had to create posters for events. So we had to do a lot of those. So I think my design process sort of built up from there. And then I would look at all these like websites online, how to get inspiration and like, all these like trends and familiarizing myself with typography specifically so yeah that was mostly in university when i started to dabble into it but i like it because every time i like this year i feel like my design the way i look at design or how i want to design also changes because that's how you grow so yeah it's been a good like six years since Mm -hmm. i've been diving into design in general and did you teach yourself then initially in the beginning with photoshop and stuff? yeah yeah i mean my best friend just showed me like this is the brush tool that's it but, <laughs> you know and then from that google wasn't very very famous back then i was like the first time i did photoshop like 2006 2007 i was using the, it was before the cs thing like i forgot the, what was it called but yeah before that so yeah, I did a lot of like tweaking and stuff. So I think my strongest design software would be Photoshop, even yeah. if it's not generally for design, because a lot of people yeah. use Illustrator. I do Photoshop and InDesign better than Illustrator. So I guess those are my home base <laughs> softwares. We all have yeah. this office here. Like each one of us yeah. has a preference. Yeah, yeah. I don't true. really know how to use Photoshop. I'm like the Instagram. Uh, uh, it looks like theater, yeah. and then like Carol like, when I need to Photoshop. So I think we can yeah. do it. Yeah, also, yeah. If you're familiar, because if you're familiar with one software, you kind of it's kind of hard to just shift to another one. Yeah, especially yeah. the workspace and all. So. And yeah. I, I'm like, I can do this in Illustrator. So. <laughs> yeah, you definitely can. That's the good part of it. Yeah. <laughs> because we sit beside each other in the office as well. So if something comes up like Photoshop, SJ will be like, oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. And then I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, this is Illustrator. SJ. <laughs> so we, we kind of work yeah. like a, we're a, we're a, we're a CCT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just read in the comments there, Paul um, was checking out your Instagram for the first time. Yeah, your work is beautiful. Thanks, Paul. Definitely agree. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, Deborah, Photoshop all the way. Yeah, do Photoshop. <laughs> I'm fine. Like, any is fine. <laughs> Now, now I'm also into Procreate, so that makes me team Procreate and Photoshop. So yeah, it's like... I still haven't played in it. We've got a, a girl, Anna, in the office here. She mm-hmm. loves Procreate. Mm-hmm. She loves her iPod. <laughs> a little, I yeah, have in the background from Anna. <laughs> um, but I haven't used it yet. No, I haven't. We've got an iPad, but I, it's kind of just 
I'm not. I'm too scared. <laughs> no, don't be scared. You like it. I I loved it way more, way way more when I started using the brushes from Design Cuts. So that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, all the all of the freebies are really nice. It's nice to practice with them and yeah. make art for them. So practice really nice. Little task I once know. a week. Do something on that. <laughs> See if we can improve. <laughs> so we're going to be going through hand lettering and social media tips today. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you're ready, would you like to take it away and uh, let's all get our pens and papers ready to yeah. make notes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm just going to basically walk you guys through my lettering journey just so you can see how things have changed from... I started lettering like 2013, 2012. That was in college. So um, over the years, I've done a lot of changes. And also, I'm going to share with you some of my tips on Instagram, I guess. and building content online because it was only like in recent months that i realized that not only the art part is important but also getting to market it in a way that is yeah. important and relevant to you as an artist is equally as important because it's how you communicate to others and showcase your work to the internet and the world so let me see let me just do my screen share yes, and while abby's getting her screen ready to share with us Again, let us know in the comments, are you here for the hand lettering tips today? Or are you here for the social media tips? Or are you here for both? Or are you just here to hang out with us because you <laughs> love us? <laughs> so let us know what you're mainly here for today. Have your pens and papers ready. And if you've got any questions at all, whilst Abby's going through this with us, please do leave your questions in the ask for questions section at the bottom. And we'll be going through them a little bit later on. Yeah, get those questions in. Lots of votes <laughs> coming through here. <laughs> Nobody said they want to hang out with us yet, though. <laughs> there we go. All three from Gloria there. Thanks, Gloria. So, yeah, over to you, Abby. Okay, can you guys see the hello? Yes, yes. we can. Yes. Okay, because I, I can't see any, I can't see you guys. We'll let you know. <laughs> Sadly. Okay, so, hi, guys. Um, this is just, like, a really um, short intro, but I, I've done it er earlier already. So, this was me before obviously because i don't look like that anymore but <laughs> <laughs> this was like last year so hi i'm abby um when people ask me what i do the two things i always say is i make art and write books but now i just say i'm making things because generally i am making things i just don't know what specific thing i could be doing many different things at the same time or just one thing at this time and another at the next time so I, I don't know. It's just a lot because I'm also all of. Oh, sorry. They had like a some movement there. <laughs> I already forgot. I was like, yeah. So yeah, I'm also. I guess all of these things, which is funny because when you're an artist, you don't see these aspects as part of your career. But I came from a background of advertising. I was actually a strategic planner for like just ten months, but <laughs> it also sort of gave me a more structured framework on how I wanted to showcase my art and how to run it as a business. So I would say like, I also do my accounting, you know, I'm also my creative director. I also have to write stuff like Instagram captions, write stuff for newsletters, for websites, for my blog. I'm also my hand model because no one else will model for me. And I did the artwork anyway, so <laughs> might as well, you know, sometimes I'm like, my hands are not really that pretty. I'm sorry, but this is what I did. So. I've never really about being a hand model, actually. Yeah, I actually didn't realize this until I started doing stuff for my book where I had to take photos of me drawing. And obviously, my hand would be in the photo because who else would draw? Like, <laughs> you know? So I was like, oh, so I have to put like really clean manicure, keep my nails clean. And <laughs> so I have learned to embrace that part of that's my That's just job. an excuse to go and get a manicure then, right? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, good reason. It's like, it's also self-care. So it's like a win-win kind yeah, of Yeah, we love it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I also do content. Um, for some reason, I have this habit of having a lot of content ideas. And it's, I guess it's not a problem, but I'm going to share with you guys some tips on that later as well. And I also do my project management, for example, when it comes to freelance work, like in a month, how many can I accept? How my schedule will work around the timeline that I have? Where will I be? So I sort of manage everything myself. And yeah, I also am a social media ma manager and also a stylist for like the flat lay photos you see on Instagram. That's all me because 
I don't know. I sort of learned all of this along the way, and I think having a lot of skill set also helped me in the long run because I don't yeah. have to keep asking people. It's more of I, more self sufficient. Yeah. yeah, and and that way also I know how to how, I know myself best, and it's easier to just relay that information to potential clients or people who want to take interest in my work. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is my really old. Wow, it's kind of blurry, but this is how I started. I did hand lettering like this was I believe 2014. I was in college and in university and I was so bored. I was like <laughs> I, because what happened was I actually started a tote bag business when I started in university. It was like first year college. I painted on tote bags but then moving forward I ended up not continuing the business because I had to move to another course which was advertising. Mm -hmm. I took a different track before that like some liberal arts course that i decided to just change it up so i did a lot of lettering also because i read a lot of john green books when i was <laughs> yeah that was like my young adult phase so i started like hand lettering all these like quotes i post them on tumblr people would reblog it so i had sort of built something on tumblr like i think i reached ten thousand followers in like two or three years and it was interesting because that shift that made me shift into actually making products, which is yeah. what you hear. Um, these are actually all hand made, except for the stickers, I produced them, but then I hand lettered the notebooks. I started selling at fairs and I did a lot of really fl floral stuff before because <laughs> I don't know, it was a phase, but now I actually am not doing a lot of that. But yeah, I also like doing these things, which were mostly like overlays. These are photos that I took and some of my friends took. Wow. I like to travel a lot. So at the yeah, time, this was the uh, Charm. I don't know if you know Charm, mm -hmm. uh, but they said that you forgot that you're a traveler. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot to mention that. But <laughs> that also explains why I'm here in Berlin. <laughs> so, yeah, I travel a lot and I take a lot of photos. So I'm also into photography. So this was these artworks were pre procreate actually. So it was all done by hand, scanned, mm -hmm. and then cleaned one by one on Photoshop. But I yeah, idea, Abby, that um, <laughs> um, the products that you made a couple of years ago. So you mentioned tote bags. Like, these people going mm -hmm. right? These Abby Sai original hand drawn tote yeah. bags. Yeah, <laughs> it's like vintage. It's now vintage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I started making a lot of these. They were very popular back then, like when you see on websites, like, ooh, overlay, like quotes, like yeah. inspiration stuff. So I like doing that. And then I also did a lot of chalkboard art. This yeah. was for a store in the Philippines. Yeah, so this was nice yeah, because- Random fact for you, mm -hmm. I can't touch chalk. <laughs> really? <laughs> Are you allergic to chalk? No, it just, I can't. It makes me cringe. I just can't. Yeah, because it has this weird like texture. Yeah, and, it's literally and like scrunching sound. Yeah, it's like yeah, I get you. I I know it's the feeling. Random fact, just can't touch. <laughs> I just can't, like, I just will not. Oh, the thought of it just makes me go funny. I feel like we're getting a lot of randomness. Can't touch the like spiders. Yeah, <laughs> getting to know me better. <laughs> Yeah, so here's some of my old work. It was really weird because like this one is like, this is not my color scheme anymore, but this one was also my way into publishing because uh, a local celebrity from the Philippines commissioned me to work on her book. And these are some of the artworks I made for that book. And yeah. I realized that I could actually work on books, but I, I worked with a separate publisher for my books. But yeah, this was really a good challenge for me because I was also working with my day job and like doing these things. So it was like, mm, how to do time management and stuff. So yeah, it was also an experiment to see if I like different colors, but apparently I'm not really this wacky with colors. I'm very particular, which I'll show you guys more later. Yeah. So yeah, I ended up also working on projects with hand lettering. That's so it's interesting. Cool. Yeah, this is for Havaianas, uh, a flip flop brand from Brazil. Yeah. So prior to, so this was the time when I already started freelancing. But the thing is, when I was doing all these hand lettering things in Manila, there wasn't really a resource. Like, I always looked online. And my biggest inspirations were Jessica Hish and Mary-Kate McDivitt. And that's it. It was not really, like, unlike nowadays, it's like you just search hand lettering. It's everywhere. And also because of the 
iPad, it's much easier to do digital lettering. But during my time, even the materials, like this was like 2014, 2015, there weren't a lot of art materials in the Philippines that could we could use lettering with. We didn't have brush pens. So it was also a struggle because someone like me is like super like into it so i had to travel around like japan singapore to get most of my art materials which was interesting because eventually they sort of came um back to came to the philippines like maybe two three years later then a lot of art materials were easier to find yeah but yeah so this was a design for Javianas. it was for the philippines so mine is of course travel themed and it's all about like the uh, 7,000 islands that we have, like some of the quotes are very reminiscent of travel. And I added a lot of Filipino words because of course it was a Philippine themed design. Yeah, did they yeah. have it on sale? Um, no, they, they were on sale last 2015 for like during the holidays, it was like a limited run. Yeah. I Yeah, it was like me and two other artists and we had different themes, so mine was travel. One did uh, Filipino games and one did Filipino food. And it's nice because we all had different color schemes. So yeah. it, it depends on what you prefer, I would say. But of course, I chose my my blues and oranges. I've always been a very much teal girl. Like I like my teals and turquoise. Yeah. So yeah, let me yeah, see. But, yeah. But again, imagine I didn't have yeah. like that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So with this, like with this style, I sort of had been known for it like this like i do a lot of lettering it's all like encompassed together like this one th these are actually iced tea bottles they're mm -hmm. like a litter so this was for nesty philippines so i had to do it's funny because there was this period that i had to do a lot of work that were either related to the philippines or related to travel so it makes so much sense because i am from the philippines and i travel a lot yeah <laughs> right so so this one was all about travel the, the pink one was about food the second one was time for an adventure and the third one is all about was all about the philippines and it's funny because the colors still reminded me of my previous projects yeah. so basically i'm just like thinking like oh what could i take over to my next project <laughs> you know it's I sort of built my i sort of built my aesthetic that way and my style because i didn't also know what style was doing because when i started i was just literally started i actually came from a background of having good penmanship because my mom is a pro Chinese calligrapher. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually 100% Chinese. So in school, we had to have classes on Chinese calligraphy. And we had contests. And I also got awards for, we had penmanship writing contests, like in script, in cursive, when I was in the third grade. So I guess that that sort of like built my my knowledge about legibility of letters and how important it is when it comes to anything that goes visual or like writing text on paper. So I think that background sort of bridged me to lettering in general. Yeah. And although a lot of people do say like, it's not because I have nice handwriting means that I can do good letters because I always like telling my students when I teach workshops that letter forms are actually just shapes and yeah. you draw them. You don't use our handwriting to do them. So yeah. I don't think it's a problem. Yeah, I have, every time we have yeah. someone, I'm like, do you have nice handwriting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. It's, it's the first yeah, assumption. No. Yeah, exactly. But then that's not really the case because nowadays I do my lettering based on shapes and it's easier to visualize them that way because it's also then you think about them as drawing and not as writing because yeah. those are two different things. I love so, that. The idea yeah. That well. yeah, so like for example, this this lettering that I did, um, they may look like it's all legibly written, but the way I illustrated them are actually based on shapes. Yeah, like, so, like images or whatever. Yeah, they're, they're like images. I, I'll show like a quick video later on how I do my lettering, but it's really, um not based on script i guess having a background on cursive writing really helped me but generally it's more of studying letter forms and what else you can do with them and make them look neat on paper i think that's also been my mission because sometimes you see some lettering pieces that you can't read and that's kind of not you're not you're sort of losing the point of what lettering is supposed to be because yeah people have to read these works of art at the end of the day yeah it's like when so, they're super like really yeah. curly and you're like i think i know what that says but yeah sure. but you're not sure if it's the right letter it could, yeah. be, it could be a y a j you know <laughs> it's, it's just like 
what is happening it just makes you think more and we don't want to keep thinking more so yeah, as i mentioned here all this endless overthinking is yeah. it's very overrated so, yeah. um, during this part actually i sort of changed my colors like they've become this like vintagey mm -hmm. scheme which i i still like but then I don't know now because it's summer. I'm into like a lot of pastel. Yeah, yeah. I have weird yeah, faces. Yeah, uh, yeah. I go with the seasons basically. But yeah, I do a lot of these like words in between. But then yeah, I like it because I started doing a lot of these when I was starting on Tumblr. Like a lot of my work would get reblogged with this kind of art form where I just put a lot of words and then there's like something that sort of encompasses the whole theme. So this yeah. one was actually for Thanksgiving. I asked people what they were grateful for, and then I started hand lettering everything. That's yeah. That's really so, awesome. Thank you. I'm so, like getting lost and reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm literally like, oh, cozy says. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, I think in terms of style recently, I've really been into serifs. Like, serifs are these letter forms, which are more like very classic looking, but I like adding a bit of like, character to it like it sort of has a lot of loops and a lot of like swashes and different elements so i think that's something that i've been carrying on for like the past three years like this is something that i like doing and i find it really effortless to do maybe because i've really been interested in a lot of vintage fonts as well so i try to in, um, incorporate it into most of my work so basically, these photos, I also took them for Instagram. That's why they look very styled. So I'll share more of that later. Um, but yeah, just a side note, apart from doing all these like really rigid lettering stuff, I do a lot of illustration like this. And it's funny because this is how I document my trips when I travel. Oh, and really? people are like, how do you draw that? And I tell them, you know, I draw them when I'm in the bus or in the train. And they're like, how do you not get dizzy? And <laughs> so like, you must get travel certified. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, really, I'm a certified traveler. No, I'm kidding. But really, um, these are sort of my way. It's sort of my way of loosening up from the very rigid hand lettering that I do. And I think it, I strike a good balance because these are just like literally whatever I see, I just draw them or take pictures and just do them on site and of course take pictures while i'm there because you got to do it for content but yeah so <laughs> um yeah just to add a bit of like um variety because apart from doing lettering i felt that i had a point where i was really stuck of just doing lettering lettering, lettering like every day yeah. hand letter quote do this color scheme and it really gets tiring so I when i you challenge yourself as well and, and yeah she go capable of yeah yeah and it's really um a way to document your travels as well. Like incredibly, I've never stunning. think about that. Oh, thank you. So we've got um, Dead Human, which you know, Carl. Carl yes. Yeah, so hi, hi Carl. Carl. <laughs> um, he said, Wow, epic. And yeah. I completely agree. Like that is that's an stunning. insane way of doing things. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so what else? Oh, I'll show you this video and then we could move to like a bit of my website and then we can just do some Q and A. So yeah, sure. So I'm just gonna do a quick line up. I know because we are absolutely like, oh my god, just watching you. <laughs> but remember, remember if you yeah. have any questions, please do yeah, let us know. Is. It's so easy to just sit here like, ooh, ah. Um, but if you have any <laughs> questions, please do leave them below so that we can go through it in a little bit. Um, otherwise, we will completely forget and just keep chatting. Yeah. <laughs> Chatting is the best. So <laughs> I'm just going to show you this um, process video. It's probably going to take like one and a half or two minutes. This is how I do my lettering, just so you have an idea. I'm like, oh, that's I wish I could I do know. this. I, know. I always find like any kind of videos that just show the, the process and thought I'm like, wow. Yeah, it is. Whenever I'm going through the Instagram feed, I see stuff like this. I just can't. I have to stop and watch them. And I love the colour palette here as well. Yeah. Wow. There was a comment earlier actually saying how we love the way that the colours are. Oh, they had yeah, they shifted it. Yeah, in the great the form. Yeah. yeah, beautiful. Yeah. 
it also I was, I was gonna say i'm just reading the comments and thinking at the same time it just looks so easy <laughs> which yeah. you know it's not but it's that's just incredible i agree with dana she says it's mesmerizing absolutely I could get lost in this for hours. Is this the, the Dana, Dana Dana? Yeah, Dana Dana. 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 Hi. <laughs> yeah, so this is my process. This is yeah, so this is the the draft that you see on the top part of the video. So this is actually very small. Like it's just half of an A4 size, A5 size notebook. Yeah. I yeah so i also do a lot of like questions if you can see i have like a lot of questions for myself and then i sort of plan out some color schemes as well just so i have sort of all the planning in one place so when i start doing the bigger piece it's more it's actually not that big but i should learn how to make bigger ones but it also makes me have an easier workflow mm -hmm. so i always say like 80 percent of my thinking is already done by this time because I sort of already figured out what I wanted the artwork to look like. And then the 20% part is basically just me listening to music and like painting my way through it and finishing the artwork. Yeah. So this is what the final piece looks like. It's so wow. incredible. It's really cute. The color choices are on point. Like they just work yes. so well together. Thanks. I was actually hesitant because I had this phase where I was like, Oh, you know, I don't like pink. I have this, yeah, I, I'm pretty weird. Like I had this whole like phase where I was like, I'm gonna use teal, orange, and yellow. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, I'm not that girly. Let's not do any pink. But then I started to incorporate it into my work and I actually like it because it's a very, like I'm using a muted pink, not a very bright pink. Yeah. So it sort of still matches my whole um, vision with how I like my colors to be a bit duller yeah. than usual. So. Yeah, it, I think everything is, wow. yeah, it's definitely like a learning curve, like for basically all the aspects that come with it, not just the colors, but also like deciding on the font choices, how everything sort of blends together. And then eventually like this like cool swirly thing I had ended up like owning it. Like I do a lot of work that has a lot of these like swirls and patterns. Yeah. So they sort of show up in my work. Every once in a while. Yeah. yeah, I would say, yeah. How long did this piece take you? Like, um, like in maybe, terms of planning, and I know you said like eighty percent, like you have it in your mind. Yeah, then, but already, but like how long roughly? Did, it did it, take it you? usually starts when someone gives me a quote. It's either someone gives me a quote, I talk about it with, mm -hmm. I talk with friends about you know conversations, and then sometimes I pull out stuff from the conversation, or sometimes I find a really nice quote that I like. But for this one, like a friend was like. Um, he told me like some stuff about not lingering and not looking back at the past. So he's like, okay, don't linger. And I was like, that's a nice quote that I could yeah. let her, you know? So I start doing that. And then I think of, generally I do a lot of research with font styles because especially this kind of font, I've done this so many times. Like I'm at a point now where like, wait, I have to look for something else that I want to do, not yeah. just this. Because wh what I feel like is when you're a hand lettering artist or when you do lettering, basically, I, I sort of have a set of fonts that I always use that are stored in my brain. So like, <laughs> this is the Abbey library, something like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it also helps because when I have to work on freelance project, I can't just, you know, stare in space and not have a font in mind to use. I'm sure if Tom was here, he'd be saying, can we get that digitalized and into yeah. the marketplace? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. We're all yeah, we talk about <laughs> Yeah, but, but yeah, so, Apart from that, I also try to look on look for a lot of things. But then generally, this took maybe maybe like three hours. Yeah, yeah. Me, like that's a that's like yeah. incredible. But I'm like, if I was to do something like this, I'd be taking three days. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that feels incredibly yeah. quick. Amazing. Yeah, it, it, I mean, I think it also is because I I used to do this like a lot of times in a week. Like now, I don't do it as much. But then. I used to do it a lot and I think over time the process becomes yeah. quicker. Yeah. So it becomes easier. But then you know which of course like the before, so you might cut that out or Yeah, yeah. Like it gets like you also learn a lot about yourself in terms of like it's funny because when I do some of these like swirls, sometimes I can't I forget to breathe. Sorry, because they're just too tiny. <laughs> and you're just you like what's funny. I, used to I can't that. make a mistake. I used to hold my breath when I was concentrating. Yeah. I used to get in so much trouble by my dance teacher because she was like, You're gonna pass out, can you breathe? 
but when you're concentrating on something it's you just it's easier to focus like yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, but I'm also learning that not breathing is not exactly the best way to do no, art it's because I'm gonna say not to really, you. it's not the optimal way. So Please, not really. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah. But I've also she said sorry. so impressive. Yeah. The comments are coming in for your work, Abby. And everybody mm -hmm. is just in agreement. They love it. Absolutely. Love yeah. It. So wow, that's really quick, cool. impressive, pretty, mesmerizing. Absolutely loving it over here. Thank you. So yeah, I'm gonna end this presentation. I'm gonna show you guys my website, but yeah, please do. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share this um, mantra. I would say, like, I ended up making this mantra because my name is ABC, so it's like ABC. Oh, so I was like, oh, so I can make something with ABC. So I I made this quote. It's called "Always Be Creating," and it's like something that I always live by. I mean, you don't have to just create art. You just you can still create a lot of things like you know, create your goals, create opportunities, create your schedules, create your path towards becoming a creative person. Yeah. And I think that's something that I always carry with me when I make art or just do things I like and living life in general. So yeah, it's just something I want to share because hopefully you guys would get that drive as well to just create whatever you want. Yeah, because I all of us are with a lot of people in yeah. actually yeah. Yeah, and eventually it's because it's like your life. You have to make choices and you can create these choices by doing what you love and really enjoying it and yeah. making it, making the most out of it, basically. And I think as well, again, just from being on these hangouts every week and, and knowing mm -hmm. what you guys are at, it's when you are doing something and you're trying to make it your full-time job, whether yeah. it's the, you know, Instagram or whatever, a blog or whatever it might be, it's so easy to forget mm -hmm. to be creative like that's why you started yeah so remember that yeah yeah for sure it's it's really complicated um i'm gonna show you guys one last thing so these are some of the books that i've published the past I didn't few years that you until i started reading your blog i didn't realize <laughs> yeah so yeah actually my my website just renovated renovated yeah i just updated it this june uh, it's just been a month off. yeah so um, yeah, these are some of the books that I've done. As you can see, they're all like ABC. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. I didn't realize. Yeah, because because ABC sort of like mean like um, the beginnings, like the basics. I yes. would say so. It's like the ABC of hand lettering is about hand lettering, and then journaling is about journaling, and then this was a magazine that I did with a few folks in the Philippines, and I also have some that are available. I think this is available also in the UK. These books, hand lettering A to Z. Um, these are published by an international publisher in the U.S. So I think most of my books have actually been lettering books. <laughs> like three-fourths of them are lettering books. And people are like, why are you making so much lettering books? But the thing is, the comprehensive idea behind lettering is also dependent on what your expectations are. Yeah. Like some people just want to do like really nice quotes. Some people want to enhance their alphabets and then some people just want to do all of them at once that's why i also decided on publishing books that sort of had a lot of these different um aspects so it's easier for them to just you know understand the context of what they want to learn generally yeah amazing yeah. So, as we can see there's only two questions okay so i'm not impressed with you guys in the chat moment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we get onto those. Um, can you just tell us a little bit more about your sort of social media sort yeah. of history and, and story? Because obviously you're super, super successful on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So kind of tell us how that journey started for you and, and how you've gotten where you are today. Sure. Um, wait, let me just share my screen again. So um, funny thing about Instagram was I started maybe 2012 and then... I just posted random stuff. I don't think we can like go back to the really, really bottom. But then <laughs> I do love doing this actually, but it yeah. probably will take a while depending on Yeah, that. for sure. Let me <laughs> let me see if I could access my archive from Tumblr. But the thing is, um I started Instagram more of as a way for me to just post about like cafes I like visiting. Basically those things. And then what happened was like in 20 14 instagram messaged me and like they said 
hey, you're now one of our suggested users. And I'm like, what, what does that mean? And apparently they feature your they feature your account in their homepage for a good week. And then what happens is people just started following my work. It was kind of, I had no idea because at the time I wasn't doing lettering. I'm gonna show you some of my really, really old work to give you an idea. But I did a lot of these things like their blog posts, photography, food that I've eaten. Basically <laughs> doing it. Yeah, I was like, I was sort of a blogger, I would say. Like I did a lot I of like love a good food post. Yeah, so. yeah, like yeah, that's, that's making me really, about, like yeah, like that's making start, me really like, hungry. When do you go from yeah posting as just a person to posting for other people? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Not yeah that transition of this is me and my boyfriend or yeah. you know whatever, or me and my cat, and then all of a sudden <laughs> it's like this is what I'm posting for my audience. Like I yeah. love seeing the change. Mm -hmm. So these were like my really, really early posts. Like, wow, who was that, right? That was like 2012. Um, I guess it sort of changed when I started writing more books because when I, I didn't realize that having a good following, because what happened was the trajectory of how I got, so I got 10,000 followers from that Instagram suggested week that wow. people just mass followed. I'm like, I don't know who you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> and then And then I started like, I didn't really take it seriously because I was still in college. So I was just comfortable with sharing. Like sometimes we had like video shoots in college because I work in advertising. So we had a lot of um, things like these and I sort of shared them on the blog, shared them on um, Instagram as well. Like this was for a play that we had to do for, I can't believe it. We had to do a play for advertising class to get a good grade. So that was me like acting and stuff. And then I also liked doing a lot of like, this was so different from who I am now, but <laughs> a lot of like different things like vlogging, like taking outfit photos. These were clothes from my friend's brand. So I was like, sure, I'll take photos of it and then tag you guys. But then the whole thing about the whole Instagram being sort of moving towards the whole, like I have to create content, not just for me, but for the public yeah. audience it sort of shifted when it was like 2015. And I was also in a very big panic mode because what happened was, so Instagram suggested me that was like March, 2014. And then November, my book, uh, my the book I worked on with this celebrity came out. So she of course was like, you know, we found Abby on Instagram. She's really amazing. You should definitely check out her work. So a lot of people also started knowing about me, like, yeah. hey, this girl does lettering. And then when I booked, my, when my first book came out, um, June 2015 that's how things sort of like changed because I was starting out as like 30,000 followers and then the year after it was like 100,000 and I was like where did this come from it was like I I personally had this phase where I was finding it really hard to just post because I wanted to share something yeah. versus people are expecting more content like when my first book came out I didn't know that I had to show a video of like what the yeah. book looked like where it was available and how I had to suddenly like people started like screaming at me like not literally but like hey we want more content yeah. so, we have this conversation on these calls all the yeah. time yeah it, and like, it's when it's it, you're doing it for you and then suddenly you're if you want to go not, down that route you're doing it for someone else exactly and like you have to think about what time to post so that it gets exactly exposure and and you know what am I going to post and using hashtags and there's so many things that you don't that's not why you started yeah yeah it becomes a business and at some point i sort of tried to disillusion myself from it because it was hard to i couldn't find my ground like there's it's supposed to be a venn diagram like what people want what you want and you meet in the middle but yeah. then i was reaching a point like this was actually like last year i stopped posting for two weeks which was very uh new to me because i always post every day Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know what? It's just hard if you want to keep do con creating content. And there was a point that I lived my life based off of what I wanted people to know about. Like I was in New York for four months. So people expected really nice New York content. And I was like, yeah. I was there to study. It's not the same. Yeah. It's also hard to meet people's expectations, especially because I had built like a hundred like now it's like 124k so it's also like kind of like scary to think like wow my post yeah I was gonna so say many people you were like this is getting out of hand it is it is it is getting out of hand like 
recently I actually made a private account just because I could like post random stuff and people won't care. Like it has like <laughs> 300 followers and I'm completely happy with it. But yeah, now I've become more comfortable with it because I think I am sharing stuff that really means a lot to me and really helps other people. Yes, and yes. I think it's really a, a long process. Like I don't even know how other people do it because as an artist, apart from creating content, you also have to make art. And then it's also hard. Like I used to have this pressure of having to make a certain artwork just so it could fit today's post. And that's really not, I think that's just spreading right. myself too thin. Yeah, definitely. So it's like a more of like gauging how you act, react to these things. Because there was a time like I didn't like posting, but I was like, I had to post this. I have to announce this. But then I think now, like, if I reach that point, I have to reassess myself and, like, yeah. you know, talk to myself, like, hey, let's just, like, meet in the middle. It always has to yeah. be that way. Because I, you, like, I think... Cut off for two weeks. Though, I, like, I, I was reading... Yeah, that. because no. it, was, it was weird. Yeah, it was also weird. I was like, you know what? I'll just delete the app. I don't think I can, like... I think I can live without it for two weeks, and I managed to live without it for two weeks. Yeah, and it's yeah, good and like know that, isn't it? With the way the world is going, it's good to just know exactly that we're gonna be okay. <laughs> we're gonna be. We're still alive, you know. Yeah, and right now I'm actually. Yeah, sorry. I said I love that you said that. You know, get up in the morning, have your breakfast without checking your phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote about that actually. Yeah. That was like recently. I also decided to just not use Instagram for a week after a very long trip to South Africa. I was like, you know what? I've been checking Instagram every day since I was there. I'm yeah. like, I'm not gonna check it. And then right now I have a limit for my phone. It's just like an hour a day. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah I, it, it really like, helps. Morning, straight on my phone. And um, I had um, a baby last year, and I realized mm -hmm. how much time I waste on my phone. Yeah, and I take like like yourself, I take thousands of photos, mainly yeah. of him. <laughs> um, <laughs> For sure. I think I hit a point where I was just like, I have to. I'm so used to being on my phone in work, yeah. at home, posting things uh, because I'm not from the UK, so I post things from my yeah. family to see. Yeah. Um, I just thought, you know what? No, like, I want to be way more present. So, yeah. you put what you said, I limit my time now on apps. I block out my phone and just make mm -hmm. sure that certain times I'm. It's the best, exactly. Yeah. And it also, I think it also like I tend to open my Instagram less in the morning now because like, oh, my time is running out. So, <laughs> <laughs> gotta maximize the day. Like I know, like, yeah. I, like, I, like, I'm like, I'm like, so I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna check on it. Or especially like now because my setup is I go to the studio from like 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yeah. But I can leave earlier. That's why I left earlier today. And then I try to not do a lot with my phone when I'm there. I only listen to music and turn off my Wi-Fi because I can't be bothered checking my socials while I'm painting or doing mm -hmm. art. So I think it's also it's also really such a challenge, especially if you're an artist who wants to create content because there's also like this big like question between like okay, I do analog, but then I take photos with a digital device. It's like, where is the lie? And it's yeah. also, there's also like this constant, like I also question myself, like, is it always, does it always have to be for Instagram, for the gram? Like now I also keep a lot of artworks that don't necessarily go to my Instagram because yeah. mm -hmm. I'm still working on it. Sometimes I feel like we always want to present nice things on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really a social media thing. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it is. Like, people tell me, like, why is your feed so perfect? I'm like, you know, that's a very filtered version yeah. of me. When but only because... Last weekend, yeah. there's, you don't yeah. have too many shots that, that yeah. one picture took. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so many times. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think also, yeah, I try to detach my personal life already from my Instagram because people follow me not because, like, I have this boyfriend or I have this, like really cool house or whatever it's really yeah. because i make art and i travel and i just i was talking to tom about this actually like a couple of weeks ago he was like i was like do you think it's kind of weird that i only just do art what if i just remove the travel point and he's like no these two are like very essential parts of why you make art so it's yeah. important that we sort of create and this that's environment really together. Part of who you are so if yeah you away you know people obviously are they are relating to you because they like travel like yeah, I mean, you're really yeah. Like, yeah. carol really yeah. loves to travel and has traveled a lot yeah. so 
I know she was reading it earlier. Like, this is so cool because now I've got loads yeah. of things in common with her, you know? So, mm -hmm. so I think we're going to go through. We have got a couple of questions yeah. now. I've written sure. a few down as well um, that I was seeing in the chat there. So let's go through. I think the first one that we had from Gloria was, do you think Tumblr is still a good platform these days to post your art? Okay, so I think Tumblr had its prime. I don't know now because I I don't even know my password anymore. That was so sad. I couldn't recover it. So um, because now sort of the shift from Tumblr to Instagram has been really fast. Like yeah. I remember when Instagram launched in 2012, everyone was like, okay, bye, we're going to Instagram. <laughs> and then um, for me though, now I would say Instagram is still the best way to showcase your art. But yeah. then because I started Tumblr mainly because I wanted a website and I was too lazy to go through the old through the old through all the coding stuff because you know student budget and stuff but like now I have my own website and I could just launch whatever I want do my themes and just customize it in a way that matters to me so I suggest still going to Instagram but if you really want to get out there and get clients it's still important to have a website where everything is housed because it's more professional I mean, that is if you really want to proceed to the professional part of it. But yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's just bring these back up. Uh, Carol, do you want to take this? Yeah, so Kat wants to know, how do you deal with art blocks? Okay, so for art blocks, I am I do a lot of artsy things. Uh, like, I'm also into analog photography. Do I have my camera here? I, I recently got a film camera, so oh, I've been... Shoot, I'm like on my second roll, it's just been a week. <laughs> so I like to distract myself a lot. I do watch a lot of films as well. Like, it's funny because I used to just watch movies just to watch movies, but now I watch them like in a more creative sense. Like, did I like the cinematography? Did I like the you know plot? What? I hope we've got a girl in the office called Annabelle, and I hope she just heard that and <laughs> hasn't got her hands on because we will talk about a film and she will always comment on stuff like that. And I'm like, I wasn't paying attention to that. I, I pay attention to a lot of those things, which is funny. Yeah, so I also, and also very particular with screenwriting. Like, I, one of my favorite award shows to watch is the Oscars because it's like, ooh, you know, they show the screenplay and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and the costume, like establishing the mood. So, I think I'm interested in a lot of things. I also play the guitar, so oh, cool. yeah. But I haven't touched it since I'm since I'm here it's in Manila. But I really miss it, so I hope to get back on it soon. I'm a frustrated okay. guitarist, so <laughs> so yeah. That's that's one thing a lot of people actually don't know about me. But I I played the guitar when I was 16, and I started playing Avril Lavigne songs nice. and, and Taylor Swift songs. So every time I have like uh, birthday parties, like. During my birthday, like when I was turned 25 last year, I played some songs from Avril Lavigne and like some country songs and stuff. So it's been my, you know, work in progress dream. But yeah, that's um, really cool. Yeah. So I do think having an art block helps me explore other forms of art that I can dabble with. And then eventually, like after like maybe a week of like feeling like I don't know what to do with this, sometimes I find my direction and just move yeah, forward. Yeah. yeah, I think it's also important to acknowledge like when you have an art block, just don't force it. Because I've had days where I'm just like, oh, Abby, you could have finished this today, but you didn't. And you just, you know, at the end of the day, you're just human and it's not possible to get everything done. It's yeah. Yeah, it's it's just hard. So just take it easy on yourself. I would say that's I one thing. I like, I for it, like everyone at some point will have that, regardless yeah. of who you are or how successful you are. Yeah, everybody goes through that. So yeah. you Be just have to give it the yourself. time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. These days just happen. Be kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we've got another question from Trisha, and thank you for popping it in here. I had written it down from the comments, but Trisha says, "How do you choose your color schemes?" Okay. My color schemes, okay, this is related to my the films that I watch. So I actually take note of the color schemes, particularly I'm a big Wes Anderson fan. Cool. So I like his colors in Moonrise Kingdom. That's my favorite color scheme. I also generally like looking at colors because the way, if you look at my Instagram, actually, it's not super evident, but let me just screen share it for yeah. like a minute. The thing is, I have colors that I particularly am drawn to. Like, you'll see here a lot of yellows. Yeah. Yellows and blues. And then now I'm into, I told you guys, I'm into this pink coral phase lately. So <laughs> I have integrated most of that to my work. 
it's funny because when I even the clothes I wear have the same color. <laughs> <laughs> like I did not plan this at all. That's naturally what. Yeah. Like you really like yellow, uh, so you yeah. wear a lot of I wear yellow. a lot of yellow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's nice. I feel like I'm yellow. Wear any color. Team yellow. Yeah. Team yellow. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I tend to gravitate towards a lot of colors that are more actually warmer. The only cool color I like is teal, which yeah. is this one. But yeah, it, it went to a point where like I was like, I told the publisher, can you make my latest book yellow? Because I love yellow. She's like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I try to do a lot of um, color analysis, which is interesting. But you know, I look up on Pinterest or look on look at design blogs, look at posters, for example, or like gallery work, and then I try to draw out colors because yeah. I'm also very interested with how people build their color schemes. Like some people could do artwork that has like 20 colors and still works, but then I do mostly like five, five to seven color schemes, yeah. uh, five to seven colors in a color scheme. But generally, I tend to move towards colors that are not easily mixed, which is funny. Like when I do my, yeah, I'm like giving myself a hard time. So when I get like a watercolor, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I get like a watercolor set of like 12 colors. I don't use the exact red. There has to be a bit of orange, a bit of brown. Yeah, a bit yeah, of gray. Exactly. Yeah. So that's, I. it's funny because that's also how I do my makeup because, you know, it's kind of like painting. So, <laughs> so it's also, I think it's also a good exercise just so I start sort of like expand my color knowledge i would say not yes. just using like oh i'm gonna use this yellow again because i love this yellow i try to play it around and again it's also based on seasons like i like my, i had an, a big autumn phase last year now i'm just into like yellows teals and greens like just vibrant spring colors and then into corals and then who knows maybe in a couple of months it'll, go, it'll be like gray or like blue i yeah. i don't know but that's the yeah. whole, you know, stay creative because you can yeah, like, exactly. you never always find something new to try out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've got another question from Paul. Uh, Paul wants to know, what are your must-do suggestions for artists on Instagram? Suggestions, okay. So I, ha I highly suggest that apart from posting your work, uh, follow a lot of different artists and not necessarily build a network, but really find people who inspire you and you want to connect with. I, I figured that I used to be like really iffy with the whole networking thing because everyone is very iffy with that. But generally just supporting each other, even just on Instagram is really a great way to just touch with the community and also, you know, just interact with everyone because nowadays people are on Instagram most of the time. And it's nice to be able to not just focus on you as a creator and just like making art for people, but also like supporting other artists and really helping each other sort of build proper ways on how to further inspire people with art and make art. And what else are my suggestions? Well, I don't know, because a lot of artists have a lot of different priorities when it comes to running their Instagram. Like I would say I'm an artist, but also when you look at my Instagram, I kind of look like I'm not just an artist, like because I have a lot of like travel photos in between. Yeah. But then there are also artists who just post purely their art. Mm -hmm. So I think if you're starting out as an art art account on Instagram, I highly suggest trying out which format you think matches with you as a person. Like, do you want to share more information about you? Or is it just your art? Or do you want to share tutorials? Because I help. I think that helps direct also your audience and what they can expect from you as a creator like what type of content they're following yeah, yeah for, exactly and it's also about consistency as well like i think like the whole thing about being an art account on instagram doesn't mean that if your artwork is nice that's it because if the photo is crappy then you won't get anything from it so i highly just recommend really putting out quality content even if you don't post every day just maybe like i do like thrice a week now or like twice a week but it really helps having really quality content because you don't know who's gonna look at your profile to be like some curator or some potential client or some website who wants to partner with you. So it's important because you have to put out a really good face. It's like an extension of yourself as an artist. And right now the internet is basically the way for people to find you. And it's important to put your best foot forward basically. Amazing. So we've got very quickly, we'll just have two more questions. Sure quick fire questions before we have to shoot off. So um, Kurt had asked, where do you get your inspiration from? Mm -hmm. That's hard. I get it from a lot of places. <laughs> I was like quick fire, you probably yeah. can't 
that one really quick. You know, but basically, I would say at this point, now that you've asked me, it's every time I travel. Like, it's funny when I take the tram, because I take the tram here when I go to the studio. In 40 minutes, I could come up with a business idea. That's how fast my my brain works or a plane ride trains basically when i'm not at home i get a lot of ideas and i'm also very much inspired by nature as well like i like looking at sunsets flowers things that grow i'm, I'm just very cheesy like that i also get a lot of inspiration from other artists i would say like artists who have been pioneers of a lot of movements like Andy Warhol, mm-hmm. um, Yayo Kusama, Vincent Van Gogh is my favorite artist. Yeah, so I guess it's also interesting because my inspiration for art is based on who I am and my interest as a person. And then they sort of like connect from there and I get to use that for my work. Perfect. That kind of ties in with another question. Yeah, I was going to say, so I, I was going to ask June's question, which says, um, how do you manage your time? Do you have like a schedule? But then another question popped in from Ellen saying, who's your favorite artist? So you just said Vincent Van Gogh. Okay, great. Okay, so let me see if I have my my schedule thing here. (laughs) So I I have a schedule thing. Schedule thing. (laughs) So um, because I'm not in Manila, but this is like a very um, condensed schedule. Yeah, so um, I have a weekly schedule mostly because right now when I my ma- my time management is kind of hard as well because I go out a lot here because it's Berlin. But um, I have times in the studio that's like it depends on me, but usually it's like six to eight hours. And then when I get home or in the morning, I have to work for three hours on freelance stuff or like do live streams like these or work on my website, Instagram content and stuff. But I yeah I I have a weekly schedule i used to work on weekends but now i'm i don't do that anymore i'm having time off <laughs> i'm having time off and the weather is pretty good so i just try to go out a lot and um but generally in manila i'm more structured but i do manage myself in a way that also reflects my energy because sometimes i what happens is that there's going to be a day like monday i work from 10 a.m to 9 p.m and i'm like oh, get a lot of work done blah blah and then Tuesday I just I just become like a a what do you call that a sluggish and lazy so there are days and sometimes I'm disappointed that I can't keep a consistent schedule but then I can't really get mad at myself for being that way so I try to just move accordingly like I have a weekly adjust adjustable schedule like yeah. these are tasks I need to finish this week and then these are the times to do but if it doesn't happen that's like yeah yeah yeah, exactly like if it didn't happen on monday let's move to tuesday but i make sure it gets done within the week because i don't want to keep moving so i do my bullet i do bullet journaling actually but it's not you know very pretty like the ones on instagram mine is like (laughs) legit bullet (laughs) things but yeah i think it's also important to manage your time as an artist because people think artists are lazy but they're not it's really all about organization because the fact that like I do art, but then there's also a schedule for when I have to put out content, do exactly. a YouTube video, I film. Don't think anybody to call you lazy. No, I was gonna say you all. you sound like the busiest person I've met so far. <laughs> no, it just looks like it. I'm just like, you know, getting getting by, trying to post less. So it's pretty good. So. Can I ask me a question? Sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I you said you were in Berlin for two months. Um, mm-hmm. where's, your, where's next? Where, what's your next travel? I have no thing? idea. Oh, I'm, I go back home this July and then I will be teaching a workshop in Malaysia actually this September. Yeah, so I'm going to travel in between. I actually have to go back to Berlin because, funny story, there I applied for this residency for three months and then my visa could only handle two months for this time period. I just found out, so I have to move my next month to November. So I'm going to be back in the fall. So that should be interesting. What I'm wondering is, because uh, Berlin's not too far away from London. Yeah, do you have any we... plans to visit the UK? No, I will let you guys know since I'm, when I get back, I have time to apply for a U- UK visa. Oh, cool. Let us know. <laughs> I'm definitely letting you, and then we can just do a live stream and I'm just there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> chat all day and not get any work done then. yeah probably <laughs> brainstorm. Brainstorm. Oh, right. <laughs> that's true that's true brainstorm. 
Well, it has been absolutely lovely to have you with it us. Was. Thank you so much for your time. Time has gone so quick. quick. I could carry on for hours and hours and hours, but they'll kick us out soon if we try yeah. to hurry up. So, um, a huge thank you. Can I, can I just like take a, a photo? I'm going to post of course, it. Anyway. Of course. Okay. Smile yeah. in the chat, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Amazing. So a huge thank you to everyone who joined. If you are watching this on the replay, make sure you leave us a comment and let us know that you tuned in as well. And uh, don't forget to head over to our Facebook group. I know, Abby, you joined up the Facebook group as well. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, carry on the conversations over there. And, uh, yeah, just a huge thank you for your time and for letting us yeah, thank you. get to know you. Thank you. thank you, guys, for joining this live stream. Oh, Trish is saying, oh, great. done, I want I more. Want more. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to get you back again, but this for time, sure. yeah. you can over with us if you get okay. to yeah. 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 That'd be, really cool. be great. Yeah. Yeah. Be yeah. So, amazing. Thank you very much. We'll see you all again yeah. same time next week. With Tom, not me. Yeah, Tom will be back <laughs> next week. He is on holiday this week. Um, oh, but, yeah, he'll be back in next week. And um, we may even have another one of our team members in next week, which... I won't let out the bag just yet, but you might be able to meet somebody else. So uh, we'll see you all next week. And a huge thank you once again. Abby, yeah, thank you for your time. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.